Hey folks, Al Manic the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna go ahead and discuss and define eight terms in metal shaping. So let's get to it. So in a few of the videos that I've done to this point, I've used terms in metal shaping that I may not have defined to a thorough degree. And I wanna go ahead and discuss them with you so you have a good basis and an understanding of these terms that I'm going to use in future videos or I have used in past videos. I feel like if you know these terms and you understand them, then they'll really help you to understand and wrap your mind around the metal shaping process itself. So let's go ahead and discuss these terms. Anneal or annealing. Annealing is the process of heating a piece of material to a set temperature for a set amount of time and then allowing it to cool slowly back to normalized temperature. This process causes a decrease in tensile strength while increasing the ductility of a piece of material. That means that it's not as strong, but it's softer and easier to form or shape for your working processes. This is really good if you know you're gonna be putting a lot of shape into a panel, you're gonna be creating a complex shape out of that piece. This will allow you to go ahead and soften that piece so that you start and work a little easier through the process. If you start out with a really hard piece of material, you can actually end up with an over hardened piece of material by the end of the project, or you just reach a point where it's too hard to work with anymore, and the shape has created too much strength and structure that's fighting you as you're trying to work that piece. We will discuss work hardening a little bit later in this video. Next up is a compound curve. A compound curve is a panel that has a curve in one direction as well as in the perpendicular direction to that first direction. The place that this probably stands out the most to you is something like say a 1932 Ford front fender. It's got a nice sweeping curve in one direction as well as the other direction. Something like say a K5 Chevy Blazer front fender it has compound curve shapes to it, but it's not necessarily what you think of when you talk about a compound curve. In a lot of ways, it's fairly flat one direction and curved the other direction. Whereas that 1932 front fender is curved both directions pretty heavily with a high crown shape. Compound curves are created via shape in a panel. We'll get to what shape actually means in a second. Next up is form or forming. Forming a piece of material means that you actually change the shape of it without shrinking or stretching that piece. The most common places you can think of form is something like a slip roller. Go ahead and feed that piece of sheet metal through there. As you apply the pressure to it through the slip roller, you start to put a curve into that piece. It's only in one direction and it's just forming it. Technically, if you took your time, you could take that piece back to flat because it has not shrunk and it has not stretched. It has not thickened and it has not thinned at any point on that material. Forming can also be something like, say, just as simple as taking a piece and bending it with your hand. And the other most common place where you think of form is something like taking your piece to a break and bending a flange on it. When you bend that piece, you have created a new form on that sheet metal Technically, you have stretched it a tiny bit on the bend line, but we generally refer to this as form, not as shrinking or stretching a piece. Next up is metal bumping or dinging. Metal bumping is restoring a panel to its original intended shape. This is basically repairing a dent. If you have a dent in a fender or quarter panel, you know that that is not the shape that that panel is supposed to be, that it was intended to be, or that you intend it to be. You need to metal bump it. That is the process of taking maybe a dolly, putting it up behind that dent, working around it, or working on dolly to go ahead and shrink, stretch, move that material as you need. Basically, metal bumping or dinging is just referring to repairing a dent and the process of repairing a dent. This is a fair bit more complex than just saying that. We will probably do a whole video about metal bumping sometime in the near future. Next up is a reverse curve. Easiest way to think of a reverse curve is either think of a potato chip or think of a saddle on a horse. They have shape in two different directions, in two opposite directions. The reverse curve will have shape in the one direction and then in the perpendicular direction, 90 degrees off of that, it will actually have a dish the other way. Reverse curves can be very tricky to create. They're one of the more complex and difficult shapes to accurately recreate when you're trying to create a patch piece or match the buck that you're trying to form to. Next up is shape. Shape is actually taking a piece of material and stretching or shrinking it to create a different shape in that piece of material. Unlike form, shape actually implies that you are either thinning or thickening a piece of material, either through the process of stretching or shrinking. Next up is the word shrink or shrinking. 
The idea here is you're actually going ahead and gathering up material and you're thickening that piece. You're technically taking the atoms of that piece, gathering them into one area so that they are thicker in that area. This came up when I was doing a hammer forming demonstration with the outside of that hammer form. As I'm hammering down around the curve of that hammer form, I'm actually taking the material, I'm gathering it up, and I'm shrinking it. So the piece actually ends up being thicker at the end than it was when it started. Shrinking is very often how a lot of folks like to shape sheet metal, because when they're shrinking a piece of material, they're actually gathering that material up and they're making it thicker and stronger, whereas the stretch process will actually thin the piece of material. So let's go ahead and talk about the next one, and that is stretch. Stretch or stretching is actually taking that piece of material and thinning it out. Something like a power hammer when it's not using thumbnail dies, an English wheel, or a planishing hammer generally work on the principle of stretching a piece of material. The force applied to that piece of material actually takes the atoms and spreads them out. So you start out with a piece of 16 gauge material that by the time you're done shaping it, putting a high crown in it and getting a lot of shape into that piece, you've actually thinned that material out. Sometimes it can get quite thin. In my hammer forming video where I actually formed the speed bump, I actually overstretched that material a little bit and it tore because it got so thin and I was still applying so much force to it that I split the piece of material. There's more that goes into that than just simply overstretching the material, but that is a good demonstration of stretching. As you are hammering on that piece, as you are putting the force on that piece, it's actually thinning out. It's like taking a piece of, say, silly putty and grabbing it and stretching it out. That's what you're doing. You're stretching the piece of material you're working with. As I said, when it comes to shrinking, a lot of people prefer shrinking over stretching and try to aim for a shrink because they want the piece to rather to be thicker than thinner. The last thing you wanna do is finish an entire project and you got the shape all the way you want it, but you thinned it out so much that that piece would dent very easily or become damaged very easily. That's a concern, especially say you're shaping a fender or something like that. If the piece thinned out a whole lot by the time you're done, you might have actually ruined the piece even though you achieved the shape you were trying to create. And last but not least is work hardening. Work hardening is basically what happens to a piece of material as you work it. Whether you're hammering on it, whether you're shrinking it, whether you're shaping it on the English wheel, you're actually creating a situation where the atoms of that piece of material are grouping up in different and strange ways that lock up the panel. They make it very solid. Work hardening increases the tensile strength of the piece of material, making it stronger, but greatly reduces the ductility of it, meaning that it won't bend and form nearly as easily. Where you mostly need to think about work hardening is usually on, I'll say, a piece of aluminum or non-ferrous materials when you're trying to create a complex shape. As you're hammering on that piece, as you're getting a lot of shape into it, you're forming it out, trying to, say, create a fender for a vehicle. That piece becomes work hardened as you work it. When that work hardening sets in, you'll find that hammering on that piece of material is much more difficult than it was previously. As you're trying to move that material through an English wheel, through the power hammer, hammering it over a stump, whatever you're trying to do, you'll actually find it requires much more effort and the material moves slower. When you come to a situation where you find and feel that that piece is starting to become work hardened and it's fighting you as you're trying to shape it, especially if you still have quite a long ways to go with the piece, then you should think about annealing the piece. Go ahead and anneal the piece to go ahead and reduce the tensile strength but bring up the ductility so you can continue to shape it. The annealing process may slightly distort the piece as you are working with it, but it will make your life significantly easier to go ahead and finish that piece so you're not fighting yourself the whole way. All right, that's it for the definitions for this video, folks. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments down below. Are there any terms that I didn't cover you feel I should have? Are there any topics in here that I didn't cover in depth enough for you? I made this video because sometimes when I'm doing a project, when I'm creating a video, I'll say a term and I feel like I should stop and explain that term thoroughly, but then I feel like that'll take away from what I'm actually doing in the video. I wanted to create a video so you could go ahead and pick up these terms so when I refer to them either in previous videos or in future videos, you have a good baseline understanding of what it is I mean when I say these terms. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. Let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, do you have anything else that I, you think I should have covered? Maybe I'll make another video covering those terms. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.